some people are not here. I don't know why. But we have to start. Anyway, those are your homework for next time. Uh, the first, probably the first few problem, I don't know, up to 38 or 40, they are determinate problem. And then it become indeterminate problem, not, not like previous chapter. We don't have any temperature in this part. And then I gave you two problem, four and six from the handout, page six and seven. It is there, you can see it there. Some of them I may do it in class, depend how much time I have. And this was the idea that was presented to you last time. So you have to remember the technique, the idea, not the formula again. Formula will be always given to you. Everybody understand that. The, what I said last time is the following. If we have a shaft and cross section of the shaft is a circular shape, then there is going to be a gamma there, there are going to be a tau there. And when we look at the cross section, at the center of the cross section, there is no stress. As we go around, this is not like chapter one. The chapter one, the stresses, the shear stresses was vertical or horizontal, depend which way we are looking at. Here, the shear stresses are in circular format, so you have to understand that. You are at this level, for example. There are stresses going in circular format like that. I gave you the formula for that. And as we were going from center to outside, the stresses kept increasing in such a way that the stresses <coughs> on the outside, which is the maximum, but I'm showing it with the color. So the stresses here, uh, uh, assuming the torque is counterclockwise, so therefore the stress is also going like this. Any, anyhow, you know, so in, a, in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about the state of stress for this one as well. So this was the rho distance and this was the C distance. So I gave you two formula that, first of all, before we go through this, we had gamma equal to tau strain due to the shear stress was tau divided by modulus of rigidity from the Hooke's law. Then from this formula, we end up tau max to be equal to Tc over J, it could be plus or it could be minus. We haven't talked about the sign of it, not yet. So it, for the first few problems, you come with the magnitude of that. That should be sufficient. But eventually, they are going to have a sign either plus or like a sigma, which has tension is plus, compression is minus. We have to assign sign to that as well. So then, if we are in, this is for outside, which is the maroon one, which is the maximum one. If you are looking for inside, Tau, of course, inside at any other point like here, point A. For example, tau at A was equal to T rho over J. So obviously, you change the C to rho. You have your stresses there. So when rho equal to 0 at the center of the shaft, stress is 0, shear stress 0. And when rho becomes your C, obviously, you get the highest value. And then I give you another quantity, which was phi. And the phi end up to be equal to exactly like delta. It end up to be TL over GJ. Remember, delta was PL over EA. It's exactly. Instead of P, you have torque. Length is length. And what was phi? Anybody can explain phi one more time to me? Because that's very important in order to do all our homework, including the, all of that. We need to understand two things. One, the format of a stress that I explained to you last time, and how the formula will be given to you. And second, what's the meaning of the phi? What's the phi? What? Angular of twist. So, but angular of the twist is different from RPM. I want you to understand that. You don't need to write this down, but this is what's going to happen, guys. Yes, you are right. I said phi is the relative angular of the twist of one end of the shaft with respect to the other one. Let's understand what this phi is. If it's formula wise, is TL over GJ. So that means if I twist this, as you saw it last time, I put it like that, this end going to go through some rotation with respect to the other end. Now, what happened is this in the real life scenario. Let's say this is the Shaft of your car, is that understood? The shaft, I'm going to talk about it today at the to today's lecture. We talk about all of that because the shaft usually is connected to a 
a motor running at certain horsepower. So you buy a different car at different horsepower. That horsepower is going to be changed into a torque, into your machine, yes? So this horsepower become a torque, torque applied here, and as soon as you turn the engine on, that's what going to, before the engine is, is turned off, your shaft is a straight like this. Is that under the shaft of your car? Is that correct or not? Then, as soon as you, depend how much gas you put, you increase the value of, torque. So when you do that, this side is attached to wheel or some other part of the machine. This side is going to have a little angular rotation. This is not RPM. Everybody understand. This means immediately as soon as the torque being applied there, let's say this, ang this, uh, this part with respect to that part, going to go through the half a degree of angular change. Then start, start rotating in this position is going to do the RPM. Now, as soon as the car is new, this is half a degree or less, depend how they are designing. Now, your car become older and older due to the fatigue, due to the rust, due to the dust, due to the lots of things that makes this weaker and weaker. This fee become bigger and bigger. To get to the certain level, get to four degree or five degree, depend what kind of machine you have. If we get to that level, it's not going to go through this easily. It's going to start making noise for you. So immediately you have to take your car to Amco and change your <laughs> transmission shaft. Is that correct or not? Because the relative angular rotation of one side with respect to other side have exceeded the tolerance of that because when it is new, it's a small. When it is old, it gets a little bit bigger and you will get in trouble. So if you keep your car too long, you have to change that usually. Now this day you change the car before anything, when the brake goes out. So anyhow, that's the different story. Everybody understand what I'm saying that, yes? So that's the, the, the fee. Now let's go knowing all of that. So let's now move on to the problem we had last time. The problem that we have last time, I have to put it back again on the board. Unfortunately, I could not finish it. Or did I start it? Or did I, did I start number one mm -hmm. yes. for the other? Or did, did I go through the static of it? Yes or no? I believe so. Oh, yes, I did. So OK, so let's, just, let's put it back again, because the discussion is that this was a shaft A, B, C, D. We had a torque of 800 pound inch of torque here action wise and wow. then we had here another torque I believe it was 2400 pound inch of torque at point B so this was point A this is point B then at point C we had another torque of I believe 1000 pound inch there and let's this time this, these are all given in your handout by the way let's say that the lengths are 10 inch 10 inch and 10 inch and the diameter of all of this part are given to you. So here the diameter is uh, 0.8 inch. Here the diameter from B to C is equal to point, uh, of 0.1 inch. And here the diameter is 1.2. As you see the diameter somehow for this ex exercise is changing. Is typically, that's not done that way because it's difficult to build it like that, but this is for class exercise. Yes or no? Then we want to calculate where is the tau max, and also we want to calculate the relative, that's what I said last time, this is point D. Assuming this part is fixed, which usually it is not, but we assume that always. So we assume one side, as I saw it here, we calculate the re relative angular rotation of one end with respect to the other end that I'm assuming this is fixed. Is that correct or not? Yes. So therefore, we want to calculate tau for every section. So that's the question we want to, and also we, cal we want to calculate phi of A with respect to D. Now we write it like that. Phi of A, assuming this is fixed, how much point A is moving there? Obviously, I have to use those two formula. Everything is given, it's very simple. I have just to do it once in order for you not to make any mistake in the unit, et cetera, et cetera. First of all, this is a solid shaft. For the solid shaft, J is become equal to pi over two C to the power of four from static. That is polar moment of inertia that we have it <coughs> from the table. So you are going to use it so often that you are, I'm sure you are going to remember it. Yes or no? If not, it's in the table. Correct or not? Yeah. All right. So 
it's better always to do this at the beginning. So calculate all the j's before, and then you have to use it several times. Let's let be it. So I'm going to use j of ab, which is pi over 2 times 0.4 to the power of 4. Notice, it, do not make mistake between diameter and radius. You need the radius there. And I need to have my number here. So therefore, the polar moment of inertia of shaft AB is given like that. And you have to go to three digit, guys. Some of you going to 10 digits. Some of you stopping at two digits, both wrong. I do not want to see more than three or four digits because you are wasting your time. And of course, I need minimum of three digits. Next time in your quizzes and the final, if you do not follow this, you are going to lose point because you are going to lose your accuracy of your number. Everybody understand that. Minimum of not three decimal point. Again, I'm repeating. Three digits means if there is O, O, O here, you still need three digits at the end, like I'm doing here. So inch to the power of four. Se similarly, JBC is pi over 2.5 to the power of four. So that one is 0 0.0981 inch to the power of four. And JCD, the last part, is pi over 2.6 to the power of four equal to point, oops, sorry, no zero point two zero four. Notice although these are, look at it, these are increasing the radius, increasing only 20%, look at it, from 0.4, but this is a big change there. Why? Because they are to the power of four, of course, yes, you can see that. So if you make a mistake there, it's going to change your result. Uh, uh, definitely big difference between the results. Some people use the diameter instead of the radius, so be careful. If you use diameter, the result is eight times larger. Everybody see what I'm talking about. Yes, your stresses become eight times smaller. Nevertheless, tau now. Tau, A, B, this is in magnitude. We are not assigning a sign to it, not yet, until I talk about the state of a stress. So tau, A, B is equal to, in magnitude, equal to the torque. Torque, we already decided last time. The torque is, forget about plus or minus, the torque is, magnitude of it is, 800, that's right, 800 pound inch. This is the first time I'm using, so I'm going to use the uh, unit in order to show you that the unit works. Multiplied by C, C is 0.4 inch, and divided by J, which is 0 0.0402 inch to the power of four. As you see, two of these inches and drops out with the two of them, so the net result is pound per inch square, which is unit of stress, and that is PSI. Is that correct? Pound per inch square. The result is, okay, if you do that, that calculation, that ends up to be equal to uh, 7,957 PSI. So torque AB is going to go under shear stress of that much. And similarly, we have to calculate torque for B, C, and C, D, so let's do that for B, C. So for B, C, of course, again, the magnitude is not 800. We decide again, remember that this was 800. This was, this is going action-wise. It's going 800 clockwise. This is 1600 counterclockwise, not 2400, 2400 minus 800. Everybody understand that? We did that last time. I believe we finished that. Yes or no? Are you with me? Dreaming about something else? Okay, so what's the, to what's the torque in the third part then? It's the torque in the third part. So. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yes, you were, you, were, you were not here for a few seconds, but that's okay, guys. <laughs> in, order, <laughs> in order to understand all of this, guys, so this is two things that I asked you from day first, and I'm going to repeat that again and again and mention it to other crowds. There's no way you can learn this material by looking for a recipe and then look at the solution manual and do that. This is very important to listen to me carefully because everything that I say in class, basically after teaching this course so many times, it's the result of all the questions that you guys asked me before. Everybody understands. So I know where your difficulty might 
might be so I'm addressing all of them, everybody. One of them is unit, one of them I have seen so many people you think diabetes. But this static part of it, we talk about it. Here, action-wise, you have to stay. This is what I said last time. Either action, 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 or reaction, 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 because they are equal and action here is 800 clockwise. Action, uh, internal here is 2400 minus 800, but it must be going that way. So it is 1600. So similarly, action here would be how much? 1600 plus 1,000, that would have been your answer if you were with me. So that would be 2,600 counterclockwise. Yes or no? Correct? Can you yes. treat it the same when we have a hollow shaft? Or how Doesn't do matter. Hollow and say that the change is the J. Static has nothing to do with the size of the shaft. No, I meant in the torsion. Yeah. Like, is there inside, because you know when it's solid, how it twists? No, when it is solid and or hollow doesn't, as far as this, that, this, I don't care even, this, what I just told you has nothing to do with being solid or hollow. Being hollow, the only thing changes is the J. What's your question? Like J is go, what, changing what? The tau is going to change, but not the static. Are you talking about the static? No, I wasn't. No, of course not. So that's what I thought. So we get to that later on. Whether it's hollow or, or solid, that J changes as a result. Stresses changes, of course. Okay, okay so l let me give you that one too. If it is a hollow, you want to put it down here. Since he asked that question, I better answer that. When it is hollow, the area is here. But you don't need the area. You need polar moment of inertia. So the only thing changes in this scenario, you have, pi, uh, you have J here equal to pi over 2 of CO to the power of 4 minus pi over 2 CI to the power of 4. This is C inside and this is C of outside. So in other words, you're going this minus that in polar moment of inertia. So the, it do have different stresses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, anyhow, so that's how we see. So this one, it is again in magnitude. It was 1600, not 2400. 2400 minus 800. The radius of the shaft is 0.5, and the J is 0 0.0. 981 and this one is become a little bit more 8149 psi so in other words the shear stress in part bc is larger because the torque was larger the internal torque was larger the size was larger but the net <coughs> result is like that yes What? For the, the, you've got 800 foot pounds for the first part, even though it's going to No, the sign has nothing to do with that. As I said, these are all magnitude. So I, I have to show you the sign. We, don't, we, we go for the sign in a minute. You, I have to explain then the state of stress, then we assign sign to it. It doesn't work this way. So in effect, yes. If one is plus, this is put there. The other one is? Minus, if one is minus, the other one is plus. That's for sure. Which is plus or minus, that we, I cannot tell you. Until, first of all, I have to decide in which side is my x. x goes this way or that way. The sign changes. It's all relative. But we'll see that in a minute. So for time being, for the first few problems, you just do the magnitude. This is what I said. Come up with the magnitude. But, of course, this will be different. So these are like that. Is that correct? I purposely mentioned that at the beginning before you asked that question. I said this is how we do it for time being until I explain. Yeah, anyhow, and tau CD, because it's being minus, that needs to necessarily make the stress minus. That's what I'm saying. That the stress could be plus, one plus, the other one minus. So, so tau CD, again, similarly, it is 2600 times 0.6 divided by <coughs> 0.204. Sorry. <coughs> And the stress at that part is equal to 7,759 PSI. So very much balanced. You notice the stresses are very close to each other. However, the stress for the middle part is larger. So if this shaft is going to break, it's going to break between B to C, somewhere between B to C. Is that understood? Yes? So question number one was answered. What's the highest value of, to 
Notice, if they were all the same size, I didn't have to do that. If they were all the same size, obviously this part will going to break first because I didn't have to check the other two. Sometimes your homework, watch out. Is that correct here? Here I changed the size. Is that correct? All right. The second question, which is the most important, because in the book, by the way, they separate. Sometimes they ask stresses here and the fees there are putting it together because while we are discussing it, I don't want to repeat that. So now let's calculate fee of A with respect to D. This time, I need to have the sign because I know which way fee goes, yes or no. So A, B, we are going to go by the action. First of all, I'm showing the action doesn't make you, As I said it, look all the action or look all the reaction. It works for you. So right now, I'm, if I calculate fee, I want to calculate fee of A with respect to D. Remember, in previous chapter, we would say delta AB. Is that delta AB was delta in rod AB. But then here, we have to be specify from which side we are looking at. Is that correct? So I'm writing it like that. I hope you follow this through. This means fee of A with respect to D, which will be equal to minus, because it's going clockwise, the first part because this action is clockwise, so it's going to rotate clockwise. Yes, so, so it will be minus. Clockwise is minus, we know that, as far as the phi is concerned. So minus phi of B with respect to A. Then the second part is plus, because it's plus 1600, so it is phi of C with respect to the B, yes or no, correct? And finally, plus phi of C with respect to D. And for those, I have now I set up my system. My system, as you said it, again, remember, this didn't have a sign. That has a sign because this is going clockwise, this is going counterclockwise, and that's going counterclockwise. Why are the last two split? To it? Plus? Uh, no, why is it C with respect to oh, D? Oh, uh, maybe I made a mistake there. So this should no, be. No. No, this is fee of B with respect to A. That's right, because they figure this is C with respect to B, and that is, that's correct. C with respect to D, I thought. No, C with respect to D. It should be like that. Oh. No, this is the wrong one. I'm sorry. Yeah? Let's see. <laughs> Let's back up. B with respect to A. C with respect, oh, I'm sorry, no, sorry, A with respect to B. That's what I, I started all wrong, so let's, that's why, okay, okay. I'm going backward. Now let's go forward. All of them wrong, I'm sorry, my mistake. A with respect to B, that's what I said, but I went from the other side. So A with respect to B, B with respect to C, and C with respect, I'm glad you picked it up, because that's what I meant, but I wrote it wrongly. So we go forward, look. A with respect to B, B with respect to C, C with respect to D. That's obviously what, that's what I bet. Is that correct or not? All right. Now the number. The number is the following. Please write it down. Minus because it's going clockwise. What's the unit? Again, I'm going to use the unit because it is, uh, we need it for the first time. So it is 800 and 800 pound inch of the torque multiplied by length. For simplicity, I just gave all of them the length of 10 inch. If it is in foot, multiplied by 12 here, not there. So here is 10 inch. So divided by gj. Now, what's the value of g? I have given it in, in your handout. The g is given 11,000 what? KSI. KSI. Notice this is in pounds. So this 11,000 KSI must be changed to? PSI, is that correct or not? So it, it, it becomes 11 times 10 to the power of 6, because kips is 1,000 pounds. So it will be pound per inch square. KSI becomes PSI, correct, by conversion. And then multiplied by J, which is 0 0.0402 inch to the power of 4. Now let's check the unit. Here is pound inch square, yes or no? And here is pound inch square. Is that correct or not? So they cancel out because this is in radian. Is that is in angle? Should not have any unit. So the unit works. So you do make the adjustment at the end. Anyhow, then we continue with the same format. And for the second and third, which I can go faster now, the second one is plus, and it is 1600 times 10 inch 
the same j, but the g, j, uh, g is the same, uh, and j changes. j is to point multiplied by point 0981, and then finally plus 2600 times 10, times the same g, and the j again is point 20, I believe it was 204. I don't need to use the unit again because I checked it here, everything will work, but I'll give you the number here. So finally, phi of A with respect to D is equal to minus, I put the number there for you to see how it works, minus 0 0.0181, again notice three digit, four decimal point happen to be, plus 0 0.0148, plus 0.0116, all in radian, and then total become equal to 0.0083. That means eventually it's going to go, although it looks like at the beginning it's going to go clockwise, but the net result, it is a counterclockwise rotation of that much. Is that a net result is plus. Like delta, we were calculating that before. And that, if you want to find it in, this is in radian, to find it in degree, you multiply it by 180 degree divided by pi. I just want to show you how much that is. That is still is less than half a degree. That was the relative angular relation of one side with respect to other side. It has nothing to do with the RPM that you read in your car. RPM is the speed, yes, that's correct, the how it's rotated. When you torque applied, it always gets a little twisted. Is that understood? So that is basically it. So there you get this several problem here like that, several problems. They just change the number or format, this or that, yes? Now, I want you to look. Now, everything else. Now, this is very simple operation. If you have learned chapter one and two correctly, you should be do at least 80% of this problem, all of them related to the concept of chapter one and Two, look at problem number three. The same here. Can you solve problem number three for me? From the handout. I'm going to erase that and discuss a few problems with you. I do not have time and the luxury to go through every problem in detail. All this problem have, should be done by you guys, except the second one. The second one is the gear system. The gear system, I haven't talked about it Yes, The only part new for this chapter is gear system. The rest, you should be able to somehow do it yourself with the little help from me here. That's why I'm discussing. There are lots of problems there. Look at this problem and tell me what's happening there. What's the difference? Here is a hollow shaft. That's what you were asking. So let's, let's do it a little bit better job. There is a shaft here, okay, like this. And, sorry for that. And it is hollow, so you see something lined like that. So it is like this. And I'm applying here a torque here, one way or another, this way or the other way, doesn't make any difference, the torque here. At the end, I should have a torque equal at opposite action and the reaction there. If that was the case, like this, guys, this is a torque. I'm applying there. Of course, there is no problem there. All I have to do as the gentleman back there, all I have to I calculate my new J and the stresses are depend on the value of T. Let's say for the sake of the problem, I use the same number as your handout problem, 600 Newton meter. The direction of it doesn't matter, but it's this way, that way, because I'll change that. Is that correct or not? Is this the same problem as you see in your handout or not? No. This is the hollow shaft, nothing in it except what is the outside. The outside is brass. If this is made of brass, now you have to be careful here. This is a brass, hollow brass, nothing else. Tau equal to TC over J. The only thing is J. Is that correct or not? Yes? Is it the same problem, guys? Is it? Please read it. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get involved. The only thing I don't see in this my classes this quarter is I less I need to be more energy in the class. I don't see it there. More energy means your part is there. You are as, as if you are lost. Look at the picture there. <laughs> Tell me, is this the same or different? It's different. 
Different. Uh, that's all I want to hear from you. What's the difference? Inside is, it is hollow, but inside is a? Steel core. Yes, another material. So here is still covered with brass. Actually, if brass is more expensive, that's always what we do. We have a jacket here covering the like jewelry that you have gold, whole, whole gold or only out, outside is there, gold plated. Everybody understand that, yes? So that's it, this brass inside the coal. Now I'm putting the torque here, okay? Do you, what's going to, you guys going to happen to this? Is it going to 600 Newton? Is going to go, previously in this problem when there was no steel, all of 600 would go to the brass, yes or no? Have you seen this problem before, yes? You have seen it, correct? Remember the one I gave you with the square and then there was two material there? Now this 600, this both of them are resisting the 600, yes or no? And to see that, I have here this, this one here. I want one of you guys in front test this, okay? First of all, put a little torque here, just, just a little bit torque. Is it sort of resist to your torque, right? Yes. A little bit more, just you feel it, okay. Is it? Now do the same thing here. Is it stiffer? Yes. Why? Because it has the core in the middle. You see here, this part, this, is, this part of it is one material. Everybody said, this size two, I purposely put one of this inside here. <laughs> this is two material. What, what, how else can I show you the difference between this problem or the other? There, as, as you can try it too, you can try it too. Look, try it a little bit, you see that? It's softer, now try it. Is it harder? Yeah. Yes, it is harder because two materials are resisting your torque. So the problem, you have seen it before a lot. So when I cut it here, I have a torque, internal torque 600. Part of it goes to brass, part of it goes to steel. So therefore, I can write this equation. Tau internally, which is equal to 600, 600 when I cut it here, 600 Newton meter. Part of it is goes to the brass, part of it goes to steel. And then I have no other equation because the only thing I have, there is no x sigma fx, there is no sigma fy, this is sigma m about x axis equal to zero. And I have nothing else except this become problem, become indeterminate, yes or no? So what did we do before? See, that's what I'm saying, that you have to refer to your knowledge, not to refer to the formula. Your knowledge was, I keep repeating, you have to bring the strength of material into the picture, last time we broke the delta in, remember? We said delta, like what is now the, the formation? Look, when they were doing it this way, here was all rotating, this one, I'm sorry, this one, they are rotating together, yes or no? But they will rotate the same amount, amount yes or no? So, so this is exactly the same problem. Previously in chapter one, we said, for your reference, this was the idea, guys. I'm sure you remember it. See, here, this was hollow, remember? In outside was brass, inside was steel, and I put a load on it, is that correct? And then everybody says it's going down the same amount. That, that was that problem. This problem is shaft problem, but the idea is the same. This is, we call it composite shaft, and under a torque, therefore I have one equation and two unknown, but I know when I do that, as we saw that see, both of them rotating, the same amount, so the, I'm going to now to the lecture, the lecture giving me all those numbers. All I need to say that phi of brass is equal to phi of steel, because they are bonded together, yes or no? If one resists that the other one, one wants to go further, the other one doesn't let it, that all that. Is that correct or not? Yes? That plus that should solve the problem for me. I'm not going to do it because this is your Homework. All you have to do here, of course, you have to calculate J of the steel, which is the solid middle one, and J of the brass, which is the hollow one outside. I'll just show you how to do that. Then all you have to write, this is phi, phi is equal to T, T of the brass, yes or no? Times length of the brass, which is the same for both of them anyway. This is the length. Both of them, it usually cancels out. And then G of the brass, which is obviously different from G of steel. That's why they were behaving differently. Yes or no? Time, what? Time? J of the brass equal to T of steel, L, L, which is the same, 
G of steel and J of steel. Everything is the same except L, so L will be eliminated, but you get another ratio between the torque. Is that correct? So here you decided, okay, T of the brass is half of T steel. You put it there, depending on the number, of course. Is that correct? Then you solve the problem. Then you can calculate the stresses. Now I have seen a student do this, which is absolutely wrong. When you do this, I don't look at anything else. They, when I ask you to calculate the stresses in the steel and brass, they said 600 goes to the brass, 600 goes to steel. They're ruining the whole problem or idea. Everybody see what I'm talking about? As soon as you do that, anyhow, for this problem, I'm going to give you the answer in case you want to do the rest of it, which is the math, and I really do not suggest you doing it. However, just putting it there. After you put this here, this finish it with the number, so th this becomes the following. The result becomes the following. So then the T of brass becomes, this is the number. I didn't put the answer there, did I? Is it, you know, this is for class exercise, so I didn't put it there. T of the brass becomes point 0.729, look at the three digit, of T of a steel after you finish this. And then you put this into the relationship one to solve for solve it. And then this equation one, this is equation two. One is a static, the other one is strength. <coughs> that solve it for you. And then T of the steel become equal to 347 Newton meter. And T of the brass become equal to balance of that, which is 253. The total still is 600. So as soon as you do that, then you can calculate the stresses, you can calculate the fee, which is the same for both of them. Everybody understand that, yes? Et cetera, et cetera, correct? Okay, now I'll give you one more problem. Did you see that this is a repeat? Yes? The idea is repeat. Formula, you have to figure it out. I, all, all, only thing I did, I replaced delta with the fee, because in previous chapter, delta was the deformation here, Phi is the deforest, so you should, should not have any other problem. Now I give you another problem. Everybody should look at this one before I go to the new ideas there. It's like this. This one, let's say I put here 200, the same, Newton meter here, and I put here 500 Newton meter, they're the same size, the length, everything. This is again idea wise. As I said, these type of problem already been discussed in detail. I'm not going to do it again because we don't have time to show you again, a spoon feed you again for each one because I'm assuming, the book assuming, you already know this. Everybody understand that subject wise, you know it. It's just the formula changes, correct? First of all, if I give you, this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, point D, which is exactly like what I did there. Everybody, a little bit simpler. Can you calculate the stresses everywhere here? You see, this is no problem here. This is a determinate problem. Everybody see that? But the only thing you have to be careful here, what is the torque in member AB? Zero. Everybody remember, torque member AB is zero. Torque member BC is? 200, third member CD is 700. This is the determinant problem, much simpler than that. Yes? Is that a rectangular rod? What? Is that a rectangular rod or a circular rod? These are all circulars. We, are, we don't go to the any, any other shape. We are only talking about circular shaft, nothing else. In the back of the book, in the chapter three, there are lots of other information that's not for this class. It's only circular. We are going circular only as you suggested, either solid or hollow. That's the only thing. Is that correct or not? Yes? So that's it. So that, if I see that problem, you should panic, not panic. This is this one, because it is different. Now, what makes it different is this guy. If now I put this side also assuming it is attached to a wall. So notice A and D are not moving now. Is that what's going to happen there? Now, in previously, in previous example, let's put, go back again because I know what you got. Here, you had nothing there. You had 700 reaction there, yes or no? Here, as soon as you see here, this is try not to rotate. This is try not, this is no rotation here, no rotation here. The middle part is changing, but your net result is there is no fee here. So, but 
before you do anything else, you have to look at uh, this is going to resist these forces, yes or no? Or this moment, yes? So you are going to have a moment reaction here, which you didn't have it before. So you are going to have, I put it in opposite direction, just for the sake of, because these are going counterclockwise, so I'm assuming these are clockwise, which is the correct decision, but we'll find out later. So this is a TA there. Let's say I remove that and I put a TD there. Notice now what happened, both support going to have some torque reaction there, yes or no? After you removing the support, of course. All of you drawing this on the top of support, which is incorrect. In general, you should remove the support, replace it with appropriate reaction. But however, that's okay. Is that understood? Yes? All right, so therefore, notice I erase it, replace it with that. Is that correct or not? Now, what can I write here statically? Exactly what I wrote here. Here, I wrote this two equal to 600. Now here is different. This is going clockwise. These two are going counterclockwise. This is the way I put it. You can put it any way you want to. But my static equilibrium is minus TA plus 200 uh, plus 500 minus TD equal to zero, or everybody can see what I'm doing here. TA plus TD must be equal to 700 Newton meter. Again, I have one equation and two on. Have you seen this problem before, guys? What was the solution for this problem? You see, that's why you have to refer to your knowledge. Now, again, I'm re-emphasizing this. If I were you and I was learning this in the, the way I want you to learn, which is the conceptual, not by formula or recipe, I should do, remember, immediately I introduced two methods to you. One method was superposition. Very good. You see, you are recalling. As soon as you do that, you go to note and you see what the concept is about, not the formula. The formula, I can hear, hear all of this will be given to you. Everybody understand that? So, the, so one method was superposition method. What was in superposition method? R remove one of your support. So I'm not going to do it, but I'm asking you to. This is your equation of equilibrium. TA, I, I should not erase it, plus TD equal to 700 Newton meter. There is no sigma Fx, there is no sigma Fy, there is only one moment equation, yes or no? And then you remove this, this become like before. Nothing here, 200 here, 700 here, but this part moves, yes or no? But it's supposed not to move. Yes, so if this one now goes two degrees like what I did here, you want to turn it back in order. Obviously, it's going to turn that way, yes or no? So you want to put the torque back here to bring it back to zero. Everybody understand that? You use that method, which is superposition method, or what's the other method? I give you two, the general method. The general method, you keep the TD here, and you say the total fee must be equal to Zero. Last time you put total delta equal to zero. So in other words, phi of A with respect to B, and phi of B with respect to C, and phi of C with respect to when I add it together, it should be equal to zero. Remember, there I gave you two methods, which you put their delta equal to zero. That's the same problem, except now what is internal torque here? It's not zero. The internal torque here is? TA. What's the internal torque here? Let's say TA is less than 200. Then it's the internal torque here becomes exactly 200 minus, but it's on the other side. Yes or no? And here will be 700 minus TA going on the other side. You put it there. You calculate for TA because that's, that's so, so. Have you seen this problem before? Good. So these are all your homework are in that basis. The only thing you don't have here is the temperature. The only thing should be added and we should discuss it is the gear system. Now look at problem number two. You see number two is totally different. Everybody see that? Yes? The indeterminate problem, you use the same principle, the same technique. You just change the sigma to tau and you change the delta to phi. Is that correct or not? Yes? All right, how much time do we have before the quiz? Nine minutes. Ten minutes? Nine. Ten minutes before the quiz, okay. So I can give you some idea of what's happening in the gear system, because that's important. Now, let's go to that part. So, why, why do we have gear in our system? Why do you have gear in your car? Anybody driving a standard shift or all driving automatic? 
Anybody driving? This day, nobody drives a standard shift, does it? Yeah. Oh, you do. Okay. What's the gear system there for? Huh? What's that? What's the gear system for? Why? What is the gear? System? When you change gear, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't know why you're getting. You're going to gear one or two or three. What's the purpose of changing your gear, going higher and higher there to keep speed higher and higher? Okay. Uh, right, that's right. So that's what we are going to discuss here. So all your car has a gear system now. Of course, when you do automatic, it changes by itself. Is that correct? Previously, you have to do a long time because our time, there was no automatic. By the way. We all learned how to drive with the gears. And it was very difficult at the beginning. You, know, you, know, you have the clutch there. You don't know even what the clutch is. <laughs> the clutch separates the gear from each other, let you change the gear. So you go from one gear to the other gear. Anyhow. Forget about that one, that's all the stuff. So, so now you are talking about all this new stuff there. So here it is. This is a typical factory type operation which is happening in the car or in the whatever. There is an engine running a motor. The capacity of that in our system usually say two horsepower motor or two, 300 like your car or whatever or jet engine. 3,000 or whatever horsepower, is that under, understood that? So there are different horsepower. And or it is in the watt or kilowatt metric system. Sometimes you look, if anybody have bought an engine, little engine, they know that they are saying on the specification, kilowatt also is specified there. And then aside from that, RPM is given, etc., etc. Nevertheless, this horsepower turns into a torque. Now we have to discuss that, how do we turn these two into a torque, is that understand that? So the conversion, I'm going to explain that a little better. So we call it TM. So the number of horsepower determining the value of torque created by this engine, is that correct or not? This goes to this shaft, which we call it usually motor shaft, and this shaft usually is attached to a gear system. So there is now the gear system. So I'm showing that smaller gear first, you can change it of course, to a, attached to a larger gear like that. So horsepower turned into torque, torque goes here, so we have certain torque here, so let's call it this TM. And let's say this is gear A. Typically what happened here, that torque at gear A must be equal to TM. How do we calculate the TM? That's the discussion we are going to have either today or at the beginning of Thursday lecture. How to turn horsepower into torque. Everybody understand. A formula will be given to you for that. It's very simple. Then, this is the part that I'm interested in. So this torque, let's say by number wise, let's say this is 10 horsepower. When I calculate this TM, this TM become like there, become equal to 600 pound foot of the torque. Is that understood? Then, then that goes to here. Is that correct or not? Now, this is why I asked the question. What is of the purpose of having this gear smaller and this gear larger? And whether I come connect this to this and this is gear B, the question is what is now torque at gear B? Is it the same or is it going to change? It's going to change. In other words, if it was the same size, the whole 600 would have gone to the other one. Yes? Now, if I'm going from a smaller gear, this is all logic, guys. It has nothing to do with the formula. That's what the most important part of it. If I'm going from a smaller gear to the larger gear, what do you think is going to Do I getting more power or do I get it less? Less? Why? That's the whole idea here. Look, let's put, put there. This has something to do with the speed, yes or no? When you are going with a bicycle, you are going uphill. You are going slower, yes? But you need more power. So a slower is associated with more power. Yes, you need more power. When you go actually very fast, you ease the car. Because when you're going very fast, 100 miles, you, can't, don't, you release it, it goes. Is that correct or not? When the speed is higher, the torque you need is less. Now tell me, if this goes one degree, if this goes one degree, how many degrees? Is this go more or less? So this is faster, this is slower. So if I go from here to here, the torque should 
increase, so I'm increasing my torque, but I'm losing the speed because this is larger, yes or no? Notice if this goes, let's say the ratio of this uh, size-wise, this is three times that one. Everybody see what I'm talking about? This, if this goes one revolution, this goes three levels. So this is the fastest, this is the slower. So from here to here, when I go, the torque will, let's say, for example, become larger than TA. Now, of course, I will give you the formula for it, how this work going for graph. Let's say that the ratio was three times, for example. So therefore, TB now become equal to three times more. So three times 600, the ratio, I, I have, this is, you have to work it out. I have a lot, I'm just explaining the problem to you, everybody. Finding the problem is important to understanding the problem, then you can apply it to your, the most part of, most, uh, uh, many times students come to my uh, office or they ask a question and I ask them, again, what's your question? How can you, ex they cannot explain the question. If you cannot explain the question, how do you expect to get there? Right answer, it's not possible. First, you have to understand the question. So all of those questions being answered here. The motor running, I need to, again, one more time, turn the horsepower or kilowatt into torque. That torque transfer here, from here to here, this is faster, this is slower. The torque keep increasing. I said, let's say the ratio of three to one. So here I have 1,800 pound foot. Then, then comes the user shaft. This is now the user shaft. Now you have a gear here, you have a gear here. Maybe this one, let's, this is in the factory, you have a saw machine, you have a welding machine, you have something that is needs the power. So that 1800 that you are creating here in one direction is going to be used with the other two. Let's say this one uses 1000, this use, uses the 800, so you are back here, but you need more power here and less speed. Is that correct or not? If you are in the fast boat, you need more speed. Everybody, the engine should turn much faster. This is, goes like that. So the idea is there. And nevertheless, we have two things. So this is the user shaft. Write it down. User shaft. The system becomes the same. Let's say this goes like that. So let's, for this example, let's say this is 1,000 needed, 1,000 pounds here, 800 pounds here, because at the end you should end up to, this is a bearing there, you should end up to zero, because whatever you are generating, somebody going to use it. Is that correct or not? So you're generating your engine car, generating this, this torque, your wheel are going to use it to give you a speed and move the car. Is that correct or not? Now I can leave it at that. Point.